Walgreens now openly states a year after the fact, oh yeah, I guess the, C- the CFO came out and said, the chief financial officer said that maybe we cried too much last year over theft. You're taking Walgreens as one example. And there's a lot of different uh, companies that but if I'm react taking- in different ways. And there are a number of factors. Okay, so uh, I wanted to present more examples then. Target closing nine stores due to crime and shoplifting. The Seattle Times did a similar analysis of stores in the Seattle area and found there were fewer police incidents in and around the two stores being closed than other nearby stores that will remain open. Once again, the data is telling you the exact opposite of what the retail chain is claiming. Were you following the fireworks yesterday like I was? Were you enjoying watching the great debate between two family members? It was turkey dinner come early here, almost uh, in time for Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah, Canadian Thanksgiving is this uh, Saturday, I believe, uh, a little bit earlier than American Thanksgiving. It actually represents different things from American Thanksgiving as well. Uh, Ours is more about the harvest, you know, and how you got to celebrate and then do a little celebration because uh, if you don't do proper sacrifices like burning the witch, then uh, you won't get a good feed, uh, stuff of that nature. I'm, I'm, I'm joking about the burning the witch part, but uh, uh, so yesterday, uh, Cenk and Hassan had a very lengthy, I believe over two hour debate about a lot of topics that a lot of people have been talking about for uh, a while when it comes to the what everyone is categorizing as the fall of TYT. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the fall of TYT by any means. I say it's more that they are trying to pivot themselves and center themselves in a more centrist position in that, you know, we're, we're for trans rights to a point where four trans rights, comma, asterisks, uh, with terms and conditions. Uh, we obviously believe deeply in trans rights and agree with like, you know, 99% of what all the advocates are asking for, uh, but we do have caveats. Um, and the caveats that we're going to present are obviously manufactured ones by the right wing, such as we don't want the term woman to be replaced by birthing person, which no one has asked for, but we're going to say it like it's a fact. Uh, we also don't want uh, the term vagina to be replaced by bonus holes, which again is something that no one is asking for. It's actually based on a two-year-old story that was drudged up by Ollie London, you know, the extreme racist, uh, and then propagated by the right. Once again, don't fall for their traps or don't fall for their culture war don't promote their culture war, all that kind of stuff. But just by me saying this, apparently this makes me a purist. Uh, so I guess I have to do my traditional uh, as I begin the segment, uh, because uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been saying. Never called them Nazis, never called Jenk a Nazi, never called Anna a Nazi. I was not going, oh, they're Nazis. All of them are Nazis over this. Uh, Jenk also used the opportunity to talk about his upcoming presidential run, which he says he is working on, uh, which obviously, uh, for better or for worse, uh, resulted in uh, one of uh, Hassan's chatters buying his domain before he could. So now, uh, Jenk2024 is yours. Now, I'm just going to check it out off screen because someone said it has a 24 hour poop sock running, which changed uh, eventually just to so- show homeless crime rates as well. So I just want to check it out off stream for one second. Uh, and it now links to the Los Angeles mission. Here we are. We are a mission without walls, taking relief to the streets. Help LA Mission bring water, food, and other resources to our neighbors in great need. Help support uh, families in the homelessness. Uh, There are 69,144 people in uh, LA that are experiencing homelessness. 6.5% is the increase in people age 62 and older who are experiencing homelessness. Three out of four people experience homelessness remain unsheltered. So this is now where the official campaign (laughs) of uh, Jank is going to, unless he wants to have a different... uh, a different website, which could entirely happen. But anyways, uh, they debated about a lot of things, but something they debated a lot on was the idea of crime and shoplifting. And that a lot of these stores, such as Target, for example, are now closing their doors because of shoplifting. Target just announced that they're closing nine locations. They specifically stated they're closing their nine locations due to an increase in shoplifting. You've seen a lot of segments all over right-wing media, Fox News, you name it, talking about how shoplifting uh, is rampant and that it's not just the the shoplifting of, uh, you know, uh, your grandparents. Now, this is a new form of shoplifting with these highly uh, sophisticated gangs who are capable of doing shoplifting to degrees we never once thought possible. Now, when it's the right wing showing it, they're obviously showing you a lot of footage of usually predominantly black people. And a lot of the times when I see the clips that the Charlie Kirks of the world are showing, it's oftentimes people showing uh, individuals stealing food. Uh, which obviously leaves me kind of aghast at like, well, what what were they stealing? It's like, well, yeah, diapers and baby formula. Uh, in this case, chocolate. Yeah, this, this, this person tried to steal a bunch of chocolate. Okay, this other person tried to steal meat. 
Lots of lots of frozen meat. Look at that. Look at them stealing. And it's the same fucking playbook that works really well with TV shows like Cops. With, with all these kind of programs that show you the worst of the worst. Because, of course, that makes for better entertainment. Look at violent criminals and look at petty crime. Look at shoplifters. Look at people breaking into cars. Look at people breaking into homes. And no one's on the other side of this. No, no one's on the other side on the left being like, oh, we're actually pro-car break-in. You know, I, I'm actually pro smashing into supermarkets and stealing everything there. In fact, I'll go a couple steps further. I'm pro breaking into mom and pop shops and then threatening the owners. Yes, that's because, yeah, I'm, I'm just an agent of chaos like the rest of the left. That's what we're standing on. Or really scary examples of really bad people doing really bad things. Uh, he brought up the examples of the the, the poo man, uh, the guy who apparently smears feces on his victims, uh, or the machete lady who apparently just wields a machete while screaming the N-word at a corner of the street, uh, or uh, the wankers and the wanking epidemic of LA and how the streets are just flowing with cum uh, and other shit. And like, you know, when you hear those scary things, you gotta be defensive, right? Like, are you trying to say that it's not a it's not a bad thing that people are doing this? Are, are you on the side of the machete wielder or the poop smearer? Or is, is that where you're positioning yourself? And of course, no. No, no one is on that fucking side. No, no one is on the side of violent criminals doing horrifying and violent crimes. If you're talking to someone who's advocating for things like maybe, I don't know, uh, prison uh, abolition, they're advocating on the side of the current system as it currently stands does not work. The United States has turned into a carceral state in which 1% of the population is now behind bars. There are, yes, for-profit prisons, which is absolutely horrifying that someone would want to have a profit system in which you can actually make money off, uh, off putting people in cages. That's, that's very disgusting as well. And and, and at the end of the day, the rapists are getting away with the rape, despite the fact that the police budgets continue to increase. So what is going on? Okay, Cops got it. Cops aren't doing their jobs. And if I was in New York City, a uh, police... If I was Bill de Blasio back in the day, you know, I don't know if you remember, the cops turned their backs on him in some press conference when he was doing like a mild critique of cops or something. Yeah, I remember. They, yeah. they, run, that, they run the show over there, the Sergeant Benevolent Association. Yeah, they you dox, know what I would they do? dox his child. Yeah, you know what I would have done? I would have been like, you're fired and you're fired. Go ahead and sue me, okay? And police chief, you're fucking fired. And if you don't do your goddamn job, you're all going to get fired. Okay. Go ahead and sue me. Okay? Can we, can we, before so both are factors. Okay. Can we, can we get back to the m major difference of agreement that we had? Because like you were, uh, you were doing the, the anecdote thing while I was trying to show you something that is objectively, uh, true. Uh, one, uh, Walgreens, when they, uh, when they closed down their shops in certain areas, they said it was crime. Crime was the reason, right? I, at the time, said that's fucking bullshit, uh, and it didn't matter because everyone was doing the same thing that you're doing. Look around! Look around! Crime is happening everywhere, right? Except Walgreens now openly states a year after the fact, oh, yeah, I guess the, C the CFO came out and said, the chief financial officer said, that maybe we cried too much last year over theft. So the question at this point is, why did they do that? I know why they did that. Do you have an idea of why they said crime was the reason why they were closing their shops? So, look, it, you're taking Walgreens as one example, and there's a lot of different uh, companies that but if I'm react taking in different ways, and there are a number of factors. So if Walgreens admit, admits that they overstated the crime, that there was a real reason why they closed their shops. I agree. So, so in that so what, case... What, okay, so uh, I wanted to present more examples then because Walgreens sure it could be an outlier right they they said that they were closing down due to shoplifting but then at the end of the day that's just one example how how could this really be indicative of retail stores doing this so if you look right now this is current news by the way target closing nine stores due to crime and shoplifting target says it's closing nine stores due to theft the crime data tells a different story target says it's closing nine stores in major cities across four states because of theft target closing nine stores in the u.s due to growing theft problem this seems to be an absolute epidemic of target stores violent incidents against the workers at the target stores are up 120 percent and this is also a way that i've seen it framed by the way uh you know tyt has done this as well like oh what you're supposed to be a leftist and, and you're endorsing this you're endorsing fucking uh, people who are working minimum wage target stores suddenly facing waves of violence shoplifting out of control all this kind of stuff uh amazing fletch thank you very much i i appreciate it thank you target said tuesday that it will close nine stores in four states including one in new york city's east harlem neighborhood and three in san francisco saying it's theft and organized retail crime that has threatened the safety of its workers and its customers so that is their reason for doing this and then uh they have provided no data uh to support that theory but they're still saying that is the reason why so today a very interesting report came out 
From Jed Lagoon. Last week, Target announced it was closing nine stores due to theft, generating an avalanche of credulous coverage from nearly every major media outlet. One thing that was missing from all these stories is data. So popular information tracked it down. And just again, here's the examples of mainstream media and where they're positioning themselves in this story. Target closed its stores at 517 East 1117th Street in Harlem. But according to NYPD data, there were fewer incidents of shoplifting this year at the Harlem store than other nearby stores that will remain open. And as we see, this store is remaining open with 232 incidents of shoplifting. This one is remaining open with 327, nearly 127 more, 126 uh, more theft uh, at this location, which is also remaining open. Target is also closing its location in Folsom Street in San Francisco. But according to the SFDP data, there were fewer incidents of shoplifting in and around the store than other nearby stores that will remain open. And here we have the data. This is the one closing with the lowest reported incidents of shoplifting occurring at that location. Meanwhile, this location, 789 Mission Street, has 385 reported incidents. That one is not closing down. The Seattle Times did a similar analysis of stores in the Seattle area and found there were fewer police incidents in and around the two stores being closed than other nearby stores that will remain open. Once again, the data is telling you the exact opposite of what the retail chain is claiming. Target, I will remind you, has been uh, the subject of a class action lawsuit for not paying their employees properly, including one class action lawsuit that claims they had underpaid them by $9 million. All of this data suggests that there were other reasons beyond shoplifting driving Target's decision to close those specific stores. In June, Target's CEO said it was saddled with lots of unwanted merchandise and that it was forced to deeply discount cutting profits. There's a lot of reasons why they might choose to shut down locations, including purchasing power. If people within those locations are unable to purchase a lot of their goods, it costs a ton of overhead in rental property or just in property alone to be able to have a massive store like Target. If all of a sudden those stores aren't turning a profit, people are not buying as much of their merchandise or unable to afford as much of their merchandise, or they're overstocking merchandise in which people don't even want to buy, well then yes, that can result in this, in them having to decide to close down stores. But it's both disgusting and egregious to blame specifically shoplifters when that's not the case for these specific stores closing down and then for the mainstream media to run with it just just run with it i mean just look you know if you're saying like yeah it's not being covered it's being covered by everybody this is is what the stories and the headlines will read and this stuff is being regurgitated of course by every single person who wants to propagate this fucking lie now, I wanted them to talk about this yesterday, but they never brought it up because when we were talking about homelessness and homeless people specifically and, uh, you know, why are the reasons people are homeless, what would happen if we were to suddenly, I don't know, give homeless people money, cash. Uh, there was a study that just came out of British Columbia, where I live, uh, and the research did a, an interesting thing. They gave homeless people $7,500 each. And don't worry, I'm going to correct uh, for all the people who are saying, but that wasn't to the extremely addicted homeless people. Yes. A result of a BC research project gave thousands of uh, dollars to homeless Homeless people, and according to one researcher, could challenge the stereotypes about people, quote, living in the margins. The New Leaf Project, in a joint study in 2018 by the Foundation for Social Change, a Vancouver based charitable organization, and the University of British Columbia. After giving homeless lower mainland residents cash payments of $7,500, researchers checked on them over a year to see how they were faring. All 115 participants, ranging in ages 19 to 64, had been homeless for at least six months, were not struggling with serious substance abuse or mental health issues. Of those, 50 people were chosen at random to be given the cash, while others formed a control group that did not receive any money. I had no expectations and really high hopes. What researchers found after 12 months, she said, was beautifully surprising. Not only did those who received the money spend fewer days homeless than those in the control group, they had also moved into stable housing. And after an average of three months compared to those in the control group who took an average of five months, those who received the money also managed it well over the course of the year. We saw people retain $1,000 for 12 months, which is remarkable in the Lower Mainland. On average, cash recipients spent 52% of their money on food and rent, 15% on other items such as medication and bills, 16% on clothes and transportation. Almost 70% of the people who received the payments were food secure after one month in comparison Comparison spending on alcohol, cigarettes, and drugs went down on average by 39%. Now, a lot of fucking globes, when I first published, or sorry, reported on the story, or reported, I fucking just made a post about it on Twitter, uh, I had a fuck ton of globe people wanting to talk about the very first statistic, which was this one. 
Uh, yeah, but they were given to people who weren't suffering from severe mental illness or severe drug addiction. So what do you say about that? Well, I looked up the statistics on that, and uh, that accounts for a very large percentage of homeless people. There's an estimated, I think, between 42, and it's hard to know the exact numbers, 42 and 49% of people who are homeless who are dealing, dealing with serious addiction or mental health issues. So are you just going to discount the other half was the first thing I thought. Because if that's the gotcha, it's like, wow, yeah, th this may be more complex than simply giving people money. Yes, I agree with you. Absolutely. No one is saying uh, that uh, suddenly by giving people money, you're going to be able to end serious problems such as drug addiction and mental health issues. I'm saying they should have resources for those as well. Yeah, m more, <laughs> more than simply uh, giving them money, right? Um... Almost 70% of the people who receive the payments, oh, we talked about that, too often people dismiss the idea of giving homeless people money because they assume it will be mismanaged. It challenges stereotypes we have here in the West about how to help people living on the margins. Ray, whose last name the project research is not re uh, released for privacy re uh, reasons, was living in an emergency shelter before he received the money for the New Leaf project. He said the money helped him get housing, take a computer class he needed to work. Learning to code, goddamn, uh, toward his goal of becoming a frontline worker for people with substance addictions. Now, again, uh, there's other people who criticize this and saying, well, Lance, you probably have a couch. Are you letting homeless people into your home? No, uh, I, I'm saying the solution to this is, is not going to be dependent on the generosity of a handful of people to suddenly end the homeless crisis by opening up a a aspects of their homes. And then they, they'll respond, well, well, then what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that we have a thing called government and, and we, we pool resources together to make government function and we give that in the form of taxation. We get taxed in a variety of ways could be at the point of purchase could be uh you know on your property could be at the end of the day on the amount of income you've earned there's a variety of both you know local level uh provincial level and federal level taxation that occurs that goes towards paying for systems of government and so for paying for systems of government and we also don't want people to be homeless you could be uh, a right-wing republican and you hate homeless people because you think they're uh, dehumanized vermin or you could be a left-winger who doesn't think there should just be homeless people in general if we can afford not to have that other societies seem to have figured this out why don't we well it turns out like these kind of results and a lot of other studies have shown similar things i'm not talking directly towards just studies that show giving homeless people money can have this happen i'm talking about studies that show that housing first solutions are effective solutions at solving homelessness and and the the opposite of this is to vilify homeless people and criminals on a regular basis and and keep you scared you know that, that that's one of the reasons i hate that style of reporting that unfortunately yes jank and anna do where they will tell you a very scary story about a very bad person who does very bad things and obviously when you see that you get scared. I get scared. No one likes to see stories about fucking poop smearers who literally smear feces on their victims' faces, machete wielders who scream the N-word, or, or just like this prolific uh, epidemic of people just masturbating on the street. No one is in support of those people. No, no one is, is, is pro fucking the wanker group. Um, but I am saying that if this is a problem that everyone is identifying as not wanting to have, well, well then we have to look towards solutions that actually could potentially fix the problem. Do you enjoy the surfs, but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form. Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free. Just like the podcast. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. This show is produced by amazing people like you. And if you want to help us out, please consider donating over at patreon.com slash the surfs. The show is made possible thanks to Amazing Fletch, Anna Loves Riley, Ariane McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Doug Cady, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, Lamedia Panza, Matthew Scarborough, Multimondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Papi, Quiet185, Rachel K, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby K, Sir Nickus, Spinach Monster, Stellar Vision, Sebastian Demo, Tech Tink, Trevbot EXE, Words Greenwood, and not to mention all of the amazing and fabulous people you now see before you.